Hey, it's Andrew Downs. I'm proud to support Three Beards Media, and I would love to work with you. If you need merchandise for your company, organization, band, softball team, whatever, I can help. From name brand apparel to promotional items, large orders or small, online stores and more, I can help your brand stand out. AKC Marketing is local, based in Johnston, and we are an employee-owned business, so our costs are low and our turnaround times are fast. But most importantly, we give you personal service to make sure you get exactly what you're looking for. For. Email me at andrew at akcmarketing.com or find me on social media and let's make some cool stuff together. Now sit back and enjoy this Three Beards Media podcast. Welcome to another episode of False Starts with Chris Shipley and Bill Blank. Billy, can you hear me okay in this? I can hear you. Can All right. You hear me? I can hear you. We, so we uh, we had a little bit of technical difficulties. I had a slight panic uh, and and slight. some and some anxiety, which turns out very to be slight. very yeah, it's, uh, it's very right timely on, for what our conversation is going to be tonight. It's but right on point. Uh, let's start off. We brought the AKC Marketing Studios on location to yeah. Poke City Pub uh, here in Poke City. Uh, Teddy Holly and his crew were kind enough to let us come over here and set up tonight. Uh, we've got a bunch of friends here that are having some great food. I think we got some grinders and some cheese balls on their way. Uh, I had a drink around here somewhere that I may have already drank a lot because I was panicked. Uh, but Billy, how are you tonight? I'm swell. Um, are you? You're gonna be all right. I, I am gonna be all right. Is there an orange? Is there a small orange creature frozen inside your head right now? <laughs> there is. There is. Like, so, um, yeah, it's cool to be here. And you know what? While I, while it's on my brain, yeah, we are going to, uh, we're going to have a new sponsor, Yep, which is, uh, my friends at MoRub, like, and I can't, I can't probably see my, my t-shirt. Um, we're going through a rebrand actually to Mo Goodness. We have all kinds of products, but it all started with this nine spice rub yeah. that my friend Stefan Mo uh, came up with, I want to say somewhere around 15 years ago in yeah. that neighborhood. Um, and been on the grind for years, always at the festivals. I've been working with them at Hinterland for the last two years. I'm going to be working with them again this year at, at Hinterland, which is a blast. Um, but we've got, you know, our core products are basically the rub and then the, the Mo uh, Crack Pretzels, Mo Peanuts, and uh, Mo Bloody Mary Mix, which uh, I brought. This is premium. This is the stuff right here, the, the, the Bloody Mary Mix. This is what I'm going to be concentrating on because it just so happens – I'm going to be uh, involved. I'm going to be in charge of bars and restaurants. We're going to That's awesome. Try to grow this brand together and um, hopefully we can all retire on it. <laughs> That'd be great. I, <laughs> uh, I think I tried some of their pretzels and stuff at, at the farmers market yes, a couple years at ago. The farmers so, market. Yep. You can always Good see stuff and mow there. Yeah. Um, you know, she's always just been the shining light of everything the whole yeah. time. And, uh, just a ton of energy and a ton of passion for what she's doing. And well, we're excited to have them on. Yeah. Uh, we're excited to, to, to promote them. Uh, and we are really excited to be here at Poke City Pub. I've been here once before. Uh, I made a little stone sign for them or whatever and dropped it off. But um, this is the first time that we're going to try some food here in a little bit. So. Yeah, when's that coming? Uh, you know what? We'll get Tiny over Tiny, here. Tiny and, dropping uh, the ball. Tiny's dropping the ball. No, he he was over here a couple times, and, and asking. We should no, probably yeah. get him on at some point too. And, yes, we should. And uh, and get some information. So I got history. Me and Tiny got history. I know it's a, that and a bidet. Imagine that. That yet another story. It was around. one of my first bidet gifts. I that's my gift. That's my go-to gift for people. I buy everybody a bidet. It's the most practical. <laughs> It's it's like you can buy one for like forty bucks. Yeah, you know it's a great wedding gift. Yeah, like you if let's say you know if if the gender roles are what they are in most cases, you know yep. the, the wife does all the laundry or whatever. 
does the wife do most of your laundry, Chris? Yes. I guarantee she would thank me for a bidet. <laughs> yeah. She's doing your laundry. <laughs> She probably will because maybe that you know what my anniversary is coming up. I'll buy her a bidet for her. You want to eliminate the skid marks? That's what a bidet does for uh, you. We have two 21 year old boys at our house too. I, I mean, <laughs> seems like I bet they've clogged the toilet a time or two. Oh yeah, oh yeah, hundred percent using a whole roll of toilet paper. Hundred percent, right? they yeah, have. guaranteed. See, when you have a bidet, you don't wipe, you dab. There you go. You just dry off. <laughs> Save on toilet paper. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I bought it. Well, that's when I got it was the pandemic. Oh, yeah. Because I got a, a brain in my yeah. fucking head. Yeah. You know, I'm trying not to cuss too loud. I, don't know. I can't uh, tell if anybody can We're in Polk City. I think they. Well, I know, but there's kids. <laughs> I mean, we're not obviously You'll be proud of me. Uh, it's weird in the headphones. It sounds like we're. I know, right? It sounds like we're broadcasting really loud, but hopefully it just means yeah. that people can hear us better. Well, when Ross and I, when I was doing the Blank and Bush show, and me and Johnny Bush and Ross. Oh, Bush God, I love John Bush. Bush. We were doing when we were doing the Blank and Bush show live at uh, High Life. Yeah, and we we had it set up so that it played out of speakers oh, out yeah. of the bar. So sure. We, we usually uh, ran out whatever business was in there, and it was yeah. just us by the end of the night. <laughs> Didn't take long to get them out of there. That sounds good. Yeah, uh, nobody wanted to be in there. You'll, you'll be proud of me though. I was I was in Phoenix this weekend. I was at a convention. And had a mushroom conversation with some dude. <laughs> and how did this happen? I, I you know what? I honestly don't even know. Uh, we were talking. I think we were at a brewery. It was a guy that I had met in an earlier session. Uh, it was like dads with kids with Williams syndrome, and we okay. kind of connected. And so Stacy and I went out for a drink, and he just happened to walk into the same brewery. And I sit down, and we were talking, and and he's a he's a bartender by trade or whatever else. But he got to talking about mushrooms and stuff, and I was like. I just can't fucking exceed. You know, you're gonna have to dose, dude. <laughs> you're gonna have to micro dose. Have to microdose some, some, some just, When's the next concert you're gonna go to? Do you have any tickets to any concerts coming up? <laughs> going to Lauren Daigle, who's a Christian concert. Well, maybe I mean, you'll get closer to God. <laughs> maybe a Christian rock band. <laughs> Is it Christian rock? It's Christian contemporary. So. Okay. So it's, yeah, it's it's pretty the, mellow. Uh, so it's maybe the, uh, what is it? Uh, oh, what's that? Our God is an awesome God. No, yeah, it's, it's, it might be. That yeah, guy, might be. Yeah, that not that guy, guy, but that kind of music. Yeah, that kind of music. Yeah. Uh, what's that other one? Praise him. <laughs> Praise <laughs> him. <laughs> See, I'm going to hairball later that week. Dude, I so. look, they're perfect. <coughs> Microdose of hairball. Okay. Right. Take two little pills, to, you know. Well, I mean, you'll have to figure it out. Yeah. Hey, here's the thing. <laughs> How, where, where are you going to see hairball? Probably at the fair. Okay, it's so free, and I'm too cheap to pay. Me. So you're going to pay how much money to get into the fair, right? Yeah. And so is hairball playing for free? You yeah. Buy a no, it's okay, it's, so it's a, a free show. Stage. Yep. Okay. Or do they have light shows and stuff? I mean, is it I'm cool sure they like do. That? Yeah, it's it cool. Just, yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, what you do, because how much is a beer? But 12, oh, probably 12, 15, 13, 16 bucks. dollars, yeah. sure. right? I'm sure, it is. Yeah, if you microdose, you won't need to buy a single beer, you okay. will save a hundred dollars. <laughs> probably not as big a calories. There, there's either. no reason to buy, there's no reason to drink alcohol. Okay, where do I get and mushrooms? And you will at? feel exactly where do I get mushrooms? At? Well, I don't know. I don't know where to find them. I might know a guy. But I'll tell you, we'll, you know, we're putting the feelers out there. Somebody will reach out. <laughs> I'm sure they will. I'm sure they I will. personally have no idea how to get my hands on it. Right. No, of course not. Absolutely I, I not. I don't deal with, you know, unsavory people enough to, to be in that world. 100%. 100%. 100%. Well, we got asked here because this all started because... Teddy, Teddy who's not here. Teddy, <laughs> Teddy, who's not here, uh, ended up. Uh, he took his kids to the movie, and um, what movie was that, Chris? Well, it was Inside Out Two. Okay. And uh, the first thing that he tweeted out was how expensive it was to take the kids to the movie, and how outrageous. Oh, so it was. this started with tweets. I thought. Yes. He, no, like, he started with tweets. So 
it had started with tweets and I had commented that it was absolutely ridiculous. But then he did message me. He's like, I think you and Bill need to go see this movie and talk about it on false starts. It's that good. Yeah, it was that good. Uh, so uh, you went and saw it last week. I saw it Saturday. Okay. I went and saw it last night. Yeah. Um, did you take the family? I did. We, uh, Caitlin, uh, the whole family went. Caitlin Walker, the boys, and Stacey. We all went together. Uh, I had to rewatch the first one on the airplane because it had been a while since I'd seen the first one. So, I didn't rewatch the first one. I didn't find that necessary. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, I mean, I, I thought it's a standalone, but no, I mean, like I thought about it. Yeah. Like I, I, it's, I ended up just think, deciding that it wasn't necessary. Uh, like I, I knew the movie. I knew, you know what I mean? Like right. I knew what it was. I, I knew, like it's not, it's not like I need to be able to quote it. Right. Like I, I remember it. I watched it. It was good. I, I knew what it was about. Very, I just wanted to refresh yeah, my no, memory I, with, the, yeah, with, totally. with the with the characters or whatever. Um, so I guess let's start this way. First impressions of the movie. You kind of put a Facebook post out there. Yeah, I've already. So, I mean, it's not like it's a secret. No. Uh, well, I mean, I thought I thought it was brilliant. Like if. Like you sent me, <laughs> Chris sent me a text last night and said, or was it last night? Or it was like, it was right after the movie. <laughs> yeah. So last night, Chris is like, you cried at this movie? You fucking pussy. <laughs> so you didn't? Uh, I didn't cry. I, and which is surprising because I cry a lot at different things. I got a little emotional, but I think maybe because you said you cried, I was waiting for this big, like, huge moment. And obviously, it was at the time when she had her panic attack. Yes. Yes. Right. And I felt like some anxiety. I felt. Okay. So yeah, you got yeah. you. You know exactly when. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. It was when she had the panic attack. Yeah. She couldn't control. Because I saw it. I saw it come. You see it coming. Yes. Yeah. And there's this moment, and I mean, you know, we should probably warn people about spoilers or whatever. Maybe, uh, but yeah. I mean, how can you spoil? You can't. You can't spoil. Yeah. You can't. Really. No. But there's this moment where you see that this is coming yep. and if you can relate to it at all it hits so close to, like it was so weird for me it's so weird for me to think about the fact that i'm watching this cartoon character more like yes and i felt so much empathy in that moment for this fake person right yep and that's what blows my mind and there's just like i said i mean i still i'm thinking about it now and my eyes well up a little bit like yeah I, it's so spot on yeah it's so right on it's like whoever wrote this has been through this before and like knows yes. what this feels like and i know you haven't gone through the type of anxiety that i have in my life I mean, no not it, yeah like, not not to the extreme that you have right no. yep and so if you've gone if you've had a panic attack yeah like it, it was so the, the moment that got me more than anything though it wasn't it wasn't her like I felt so bad for her and I saw it coming and I knew it was coming and I that's right when I got emotional as I said in my head oh no she's gonna have a panic attack like I knew it yeah and I felt so horrible like I wanted to help her even though she wasn't real it was crazy but the moment that got me uh, was the moment when the uh the character, the anxiety character, that was was at the um, board, yeah, and just frozen. And yeah, and she was panicked just, now. Yes, yeah, and froze because can't literally can't do anything. And yeah. that was the last, the last real anxiety attack that I ever had. That's what had that had never happened to me before. Where I, I'd never been in public. Yeah, like any anxiety issues I ever had, I was never in public or. Right. I was in a place where I could just kind of get away, maybe go home or whatever. Right. But most of most everything always happened at home. Okay. And so I was never in public. Well, the last one that I had, major one, I was in public. And I was at a bar with a bunch of people. And I, I hadn't, I had drank a couple of drinks that night. Yeah. Um, so there wasn't, wasn't drunk. I wasn't, you know, wasn't anything like that. 
Right. And I was just frozen. That had never happened to me before where I just couldn't, I could not move. And I remember people asked me if I was okay. It took me a long time to like actually muster up to be able to tell them I was having an anxiety attack. Yep. It's like the bartender was telling them to get me out of there. Like he thought I was going to throw up. You know, right. It wasn't like that. Um, so I really, that, so that like gave me like a ton of grit bricks when, when he, and then the single tear comes down while they're frozen. And that's exactly what happened to me because previously, whenever I had anxiety attacks or anything, I never got emotional. Right. I, I was like panicked. I was, it's like just feared uh, times a million. Yeah. Right. And when, when that happened, as I was slowly coming out of it, right. I was bawling, and that had never happened to me. So see, I, that's interesting because I've never had the panic attack. So the whole frozen thing, I had no concept what that meant. So that I, the, you're right, then they really knew what they that knew was. Exactly. They were frozen and could not move. Right, and not but not only are they frozen. You have to think about what's going on around them. While there's that like force field of shit just going yeah. hundred miles an hour. Yeah, that's what it's. Because you feel you're like frozen. you're out of control now. That's your brain. Yeah, that's your. You're frozen and your brain's going a million wow. miles an hour. And wow. when you see it coming, when you, yeah, like me, it always. I, I mean, I've said it on here a million times. It always started in my gut. It always starts in my gut. And for the most part, because I've been going through it for so long and I've been battling it and and doing you know therapy whatever you name it trying to figure it out my whole life i have the tools to where most of the time i can fight it off before it gets turns into a big deal yeah um but every once in a while it just gets you it just kind of lets you know that uh i'm not going anywhere it's it's kind of like what alcoholics will say about alcoholism like you're always in recovery They're, you're never cured of alcoholism you're constantly in recovery and that's what anxiety is that's interesting i yeah i um i gotta lower this mic it's right in my face maybe maybe not i don't know what i'm doing all right um i will say that i was I don't know. Maybe I looked, maybe I was too deep into it. Um, but I, there we go. Thank you. Um, I got hung up on the characters and then I put it together at the end. So envy came out the same time as, as anxiety. Right. But I never really saw envy like being envious a lot of the time. It was more like it, it, to, it, it like helped anxiety or it was constantly pushing anxiety and i couldn't ever figure out the the envy character until at the end i was like i think envy and jealousy feeds into your anxiety and push and makes your anxiety worse yeah which is i think what her what that character's point was in that movie it, it creates what envy does is create unrealistic expectations yeah so that what envy does is it makes it so that you're measuring yourself against people that aren't measuring themselves against you. Yeah. And that you're playing a game that nobody else is playing. Yeah. And so it causes anxiety because you're trying to measure up to somebody yeah. and you can't and you never will be able to. And and it's a big motivator. And I, I think I I feel like maybe kind of the, the overall point was how adolescence brings about all these negative emotions. You see all these all these emotions that came about when she hit puberty. Yeah. Were all negative. Yeah. There wasn't a single positive emotion that came out of it. It was all embarrassment, envy. It's almost like, you know, for a religious person, like the Seven Deadly Sins show. Yeah. You know, yeah. like you're a kid, when you're a kid, you can't sin yet. Yeah. You don't know better. Right. By when puberty hits, all of a sudden you yeah. do. That's where the guilt comes in and all those embarrassment. Like embarrassment to me is kind of almost guilt yep. in a lot of ways or, or whatever. But I think that I think what's really key to take away from it is how anxiety will take over. Anxiety will drive the shit if you let it. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It'll control every part of your life. Absolutely. Yeah. And so it's, I think. What and destroy relationships. Just I, like. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that the movie is basically trying to tell you not to let anxiety take over. And 
and to embrace the negative emotions because joy can't exist without the negative. You have no concept right. of joy without right. anything negative. Yeah. It would just be the status quo. Yeah. I mean, and can, can joy be the status quo? I mean, I suppose you can seek it as the status quo, but it'll right. never be. It can't. <clears throat> it's funny because that leads into, um, well, it doesn't lead into, but it relates to when I was at this conference last week. The keynote speaker was a gentleman named uh, Alonzo. Uh, none of that for me. Just, just straight grinder, no peppers or anything for me. So. All peppers, just no onions. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank. That's tiny. By the way, he's yeah, getting our tiny order. Tiny coming, getting tiny food getting food. our order. So we're all we're all excited. We're getting some grinders and some cheese balls. I think so. Can't wait to try all that. So, um, but he he said, which I I don't know if it was more for, and I'm gonna have him on Old Man Strength in a couple weeks. He agreed to come on in a couple weeks. I'm gonna roll him out there. This, his name is Alonzo. Um, he was the um, keynote speaker at this conference I was at. Oh, okay. But basically, he, what he said was, is um, I have not had an argument in 15 years. If that's your version of how the story goes, okay, whatever. It's your perception. It's not, you know what I mean? Like, You're I'm not going to argue with somebody's you. perception. Right. I'm not going to yeah. argue with you. If that's the way you see it, then you're not wrong. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, and I found that kind of kind of odd because I think in general you're you're, you're predisposed to your pre, predisposition to argue your point or whatever else. So it was kind of the same thing with that movie yesterday in that like joy, I think sometimes like was so hard struck on. It's always got to be joy and I'm in charge. And, and, exactly. You, you know what I mean? That yeah. You don't see that other person's perspective. It's funny to sit here and talk about this movie. Like we're movie, like we're Cisco and Ebert. Are you and calling it, me the fat one? Am I the fat? I well, I mean, we're both the dead. See a big one. fat big. We'd we both be the dead one. That's so. true. That's true. Uh, oh wait, is he a big fat person? All right. Oh wait. <laughs> is he a great big fat person? Uh, <laughs> so, I just yeah, I mean, it just kind of struck me all of a sudden that. We're two middle-aged men talking about this kids' movie like it's this, you know, Oscar nominee. It's probably gonna win Oscar. It, it very well like could. I, oh, I'm, I'm no it doubt. very well could. Uh, but like this, you know, we're talking. It's a kids' movie. It's yeah. supposed to be a kids' movie. But we're like talking and breaking this down in this crazy adult way. It does such a great job, though. I think of helping kids, and well, and adults too, to recognize those things. Put it puts a face on it. Yeah, I, I like how it. Do you remember there was a show? It was a comedy called Herman's Head. Yes. Yep. And it was like all these characters are like in an attic. And yeah. That was his brain. Yep. And they all, I mean, it kind of reminds me of that yes. yeah. show yep. in a way. Uh, and, you know, that's the brilliant, like one of the most, one of the moments I remember seeing that really struck, I, I took some notes. Um, like, so I saw, I've seen this meme several times. Uh, that I really liked. And it says, it just says, your anxiety is a lion hoe. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's true. You know, you talk about the neg negative self talk and how all these, you know, your, your anxiety is lying to right. you. These things are lying to you. Um, but if you remember when the move in the movie, when anxiety first comes in, you, you think it's a good thing. Yeah, like, yeah, because it, it has a, a plan. Yes, yeah, exactly. it's got a whole plan. Anxiety yep. causes planning. Yep. that's what I put. That's what I wrote down. Yep, and and it just goes to. It made me think about what I said a long time ago about expectations. Yes, like are when, the thief of dreams. Yeah, and the, it, it's the expectations are the thief of joy. Yeah, like. Yeah, it, it, it's, it really is. You know, I mean, it doesn't mean that you can't expect certain things from yourself. Right. It doesn't mean that you, 
you can't have goals and right. to achieve goals. Like that, 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 that's not what that means. Right. Like to me, what what that means is letting go of con- having to have control over the outcome. Of yeah. I. So right before we started tonight, I, I you had called me and I was I got here. I checked all of this equipment. Yeah. On Sunday night, everything worked flawlessly. I get everything set up here. I get the laptop set up, so on. I plug everything in. I start getting a blue screen of death on my laptop. Instantly, I it, and it's no joke. I start to feel like I'm short of breath. Yeah. Like, oh my god, I you know. And so then, what do I do? I start to plan. I text my wife. Are you, have you left yet? I called Caitlin. Have you left yeah. yet? I start to plan. And now, well, what if I? And, and I was three steps down. Okay, well, if this hasn't happened and she doesn't get here, I'll use my phone. But then this won't work, and then I can't use this. Yeah. And then it's that whole. It's going and going and going and going and going. And I, I mean, Teddy's really important to me. I, I, uh, my friendship with Teddy is really yeah. important. I didn't want to disappoint him tonight. I wanted this to go right. really small. I wanted it to go flawless, right? Yeah. So at that point, and now I'm worrying that I'm going to disappoint Teddy. Sure. You know what I mean? I'm going to disappoint him. This isn't going to work right and so on. Now I'm worried about my friends and how my friends are going to react. And Teddy, I'm sure, they, would have lost all kinds of sleep if we didn't do this tonight. <laughs> right. Exactly. I'm, I'm sure. So, I'm sure. I'm sure Teddy would have just right. been beside But it was himself. my expectations of me going, I, you know, this is important. I want to make sure, sure. I do a good job. You know, I, I, I purchased this equipment. Now it's not working right. All right. that other stuff. So it's kind of that same little mini episode that I had. Right, you know, right uh-huh. before this, and I and I even recognized it as it was happening. I'm like, I'm getting anxious here. I need, you know, and it was. Well, I can't tell you how many times I refresh my phone and say, okay, Caitlin's 15 sure. minutes away. She's 10 minutes away. What's well, kind of that overwhelming feeling because because of the pressure of getting things started on time and everything working. Right. You get a little overwhelmed, but if you think yeah. about it, you were focusing on solutions. You weren't like you weren't planning. Planning's what you do ahead. Yeah. You yeah. were you were trying to find solutions in a moment, right? You know, so yeah. I wouldn't call that. I wouldn't call that. The I same see what you're thing. saying. Okay, you know yeah. what I mean. Yep. I think what what it does, what anxiety does when it makes you plan, is it makes you look at a future that you can't predict. It makes you try to. It makes you try to have a a fail safe for this unpredictable thing. Right. It 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 makes you a control freak. You know, okay. things yep. like that, and and if things don't go according to plan, then you panic, right? You know, and you throw a fit, yeah, or something like that. Whereas, yeah, you got those overwhelming feelings, but in this sense, it was it was almost positive because you had to have a solution. Yep. So. But I mean, how else are you going to get a solution if you don't think about it? I mean, you can't just. <laughs> yeah. You, I mean, were you going to throw your hands up and give up? I mean, you could have. I could have. Yeah. And luckily, this isn't our job, right? Or anything, but you know. Well, we got some comments here. Uh, let's see, T T T. Uh, wow, got a really good one here. Way off topic. Just wanted to say thank you for the podcast. It's been a tough. And I look forward to this podcast every other week. And thanks, Chris, for your oh, nice words over your years about my brother. Wow, that's, that's really, really nice. nice. Thanks, Ross. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thanks for yeah. reaching out, man. And I Teddy responded, I, "I knew this uh, movie would get you." And yes, I would have lost a lot of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I and my sister's would. all about. Uh, I should get Stacy a bidet. So we're we're caught up on these. Uh, I want to go back to Ross. So, Ross, this is why we do this podcast. Um, 100%. Is 100% uh, to, to, to give people an outlet and, and things like that. Um, really, really appreciate you, you chiming in. So, thank you for listening. Um, a few things. I liked um, the rumor mill and imagination land. Yeah. I thought that. You know, okay, I thought that so, was clever. That was those were I, fun little. I, I'm not. I dozed off a tiny bit in the middle of the movie, and that might have been when that happened. Guy. I, I, I was catching up on a lot of sleep. It was maybe five minutes, but I think that when they were in the imagination land was a. And I'm the one that right went, after right after they like broke the pillow, 
place or something. That's what I was. And I'm the one that 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 went stoned, and you're the one that fell asleep. Like I was a little concerned. So here I, I go in. I went by myself, right? Yeah. So I go to Flix, and I'm already thinking. I'm I'm self conscious about going to this kids movie by myself. <laughs> yeah. I went to the mat. I went at I went at 10:30 in the morning. Yeah. On Saturday, I my t- I I spent ten dollars. So like. There you go. So you didn't buy popcorn or anything else because yeah, that's where buy, it gets. Yeah. That's where they get you. I like. Side note: We left. We left, and Caitlin threw her popcorn box away, and I was like, and "You the- threw a fucking." Fit <laughs> I was like, "What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> you can get free refills on that's that. That's liquid gold. <laughs> it's like, that's free refills. What are you doing?" So I. Uh, you can pick, you know, I, I, I bought my ticket in the parking lot on my phone. Yeah. And I picked, there were only about eight seats reserved, not even eight, maybe six. Yeah. Right. So I picked this, I picked the seat way up in the top corner. Okay. All, like way up there, all the, which it's not that big, but way up in the top corner. And there was like top row had a few seats. Then like down below a little bit had a few uh, different. Reserves. Here we go. Oh, it comes the cheese balls. Cheese balls. Um, and this place is packed in here. It is. Tiny brings them in. It's all because of Tiny. There's no <laughs> doubt in my mind. No doubt in my mind. That's right. Nobody has a more of a winning personality <laughs> than my boy Tiny. Everybody loves him. If you've met Tiny, you love Tiny. There's no doubt. But. Anyway, here you get these closer to you. Right. Yeah, put okay. them over there. I got some. I'm the one with the beatus. I can't be eating all this shit. No, I'm on. I'm on I have the key. <laughs> oh. Now I got distracted. What were we? Sorry. Imagination lane. That's all right. That's the whole point. Um, so. <laughs> Yes, imagine, and I also like, uh, I just, again, it, it does such a great job of putting a character to things to help explain things to kids. And like, I think it's probably a good tool for, for parents yeah. to have these conversations afterwards. You know? Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> but I, I agree, though, that, I mean... I'm 45 years old. I don't know what to do with some of those emotions sometimes. I remember when I was going through my divorce, my therapist told me at one point, like, your emotions are way out of just all over the place, and you are doing nothing to control them. Yeah. And I'd never heard anyone say that to me before outside of, like, my parents or something, right. and I thought it was wrong. I was like, well, I'm not supposed. I, why would I? I'm supposed to embrace them. You know? Yeah. But, well, yeah, but I'm not doing myself any favors right now. You know? <laughs> I also uh, one of the parts that I, I thought was Joy taking all the memories she didn't want yeah. and putting them in the back of your mind. Right. Right. And to me, that is something I do a lot of in that. If it's a bad thought or it's something that I don't, I, I don't want to think about. It. I, yeah. I, I want to avoid, avoid pain. Yeah, I'm going to avoid the pain. Avoid adversity. Yep. Avoid pain. And you know what? What that also does is it. You know, if you were to apply that to kind of adult life or whatever, that that takes away your ability to assess risk. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Like you eliminate every one of those memories. Now you can't, you have no concept of, of risk reward. Right. And you can get yourself in a lot of trouble or, you know, you can get lucky, take a huge risk and win, you know, but all in all, you know, you get, you will have that childlike, you would have that childlike thing where you just don't even think about consequences ever. And that's not good either. Yeah. I remember reading a book and um, I remember reading a book. And it was a it was a it was designed for for kids or whatever, and um, but the the concept was like unintended. I don't want to say wishes, but consequences of, of 
and one of the books was centered around how this kid didn't want anybody to feel any pain. You know what I mean? Which, if you think about it, it's like, oh yeah, I don't, you know, I don't want anybody to feel any kind of pain or whatever else. But pain is necessary. Pain's there for a reason to warn you about things, to give you an indication that something's right. not right. You know, things like that. And, and that's where anxiety. I mean, that's yeah. where anxiety is a positive. Yep. It, it, it tells you you're not prepared for something sometimes. Yeah. But then and sadness sometimes too. it lies to you and tells you that you know that you're not prepared when you are. Yep. But that's also where fear. And that was one of my favorite moments when anxiety showed up when fear was like we're gonna be best friends like <laughs> that was 100 percent right on because anxiety and fear go hand in hand mm-hmm. i mean to me to me anxiety is just fear times a million yeah like it's uh i i don't i don't see much of a difference other than um you know, fear being a little more healthy yeah. than anxiety, maybe. I, you know, I don't know. It's one of those things. I mean, I've always said that all of these things can be tools. You know, I mean, when you package these things correctly, like I've said before, you know, anxiety has brought a lot of positive results yeah. in my life. And that's why the movie kind of hits home for me because you can see. You can see where, you know, anxiety is supposed to be what keeps you from walking down that dark alley. Right. It's not supposed to be what keeps you from getting the dishes done. Yes. Right. Yeah. You know? Yep. So you need it. Is that more? Is that is? But is that? Maybe there's a difference. Maybe it's fear that keeps you from walking down that dark alley, but anxiety is the one that keeps you from doing the dishes. Right? Like well, I don't know that anxiety keeps you from from sensing danger. Well, anxiety, you know what I mean. Anxiety is like an it's an out of control right fear. No, I, to me, anxiety is more about the invisible. Yeah, fear is about what's visible, and anxiety is yep. what's not. Yeah, you know, anxiety is the. Anxiety is 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 what happens when fear overtakes your your brain. Mm-hmm. And that's that's where that fight or flight thing comes in. Because when you're so afraid, yeah, that anxiety has now taken over, you're either gonna punch somebody or you're gonna run away. Yep. So, um, and you know, and that's metaphorical in a lot of ways but yeah like um let's take a break and then when we come back let's look at when we come back some, we'll finish chewing that's right we'll finish chewing sorry everybody but the food's so good here i'm just i'm just gonna eat you're just gonna have to deal with it um but i i'd like to kind of like talk about some of the decisions that riley made as a result of anxiety taking control right all right, all right. So let's get a word from Revelton. Uh, uh, we are, I've got a brand new uh, ad uh, about their bourbon and stuff coming out here next week. Um, but uh, they've got all kinds of great things down at Revelton Distilling Company, uh, our primary sponsor. And of course, we're uh, broadcasting live from the AKC Andrew Downs Marketing Studio. Talked to Andrew today. He's on the mend. He's back to work. He's working from home right now. So it's good to hear that Andrew's uh, back up and running real well. So, all right, we'll be right back. Why take the best corn in the world and make it into fuel when you could make it into whiskey? That's the question that launched Revelton, Iowa's most visible and fastest growing distillery. Owners Rob and Christy Taylor embrace the grain to glass philosophy, sourcing ingredients locally and overseeing on-premises production and bottling at their facility in Osceola. One sip and you'll agree that Revelton's handcrafted whiskeys, gins and vodkas are the best you've ever tasted. And with the launch of their rye whiskey, made with 100% Iowa-grown rye and corn, and their new bourbon coming soon, there's more Revelton to love than ever. Iowa's own Revelton Distillery. ReveltonDistillery.com All right, and we're back again live from the AKC Marketing Andrew Down Studios at Polk City Pub in Polk City. It is... 
it's 740. This place is still kind of packed in there. Like they can fit. Yeah, they can fit quite a few, quite a bit of people in here. They've got TVs all over. Um, they've got, um, I'm going to get an old fashioned here in a little bit. So I'm super excited. To yeah, the bartender hates you, by the way. <laughs> Just so you know, I just made it easy. That fucking guy. <laughs> There's bartenders all over the country when Mad Men came out, like just yeah. rolling their eyes <laughs> every week. Like when they come out on Thursdays or something. Every Thursday, they're just like, "Oh fuck, here we go." <laughs> I gotta fucking make an old fashioned. I gotta I make gotta, a, what, what do you call it? That you got a Manhattan. You gotta oh yeah, you gotta I'm crush gonna, the the bitters. Uh, and, yeah, what do you call it? There's a word for it. I can't. All of a sudden. I don't. I don't know. Muddle. Muddle. You gotta yeah. muddle, muddle stuff. Yeah. Bartenders don't like to muddle, Chris. <laughs> yes, they do. No, they don't. I'm, I'm telling you, if there's any bartenders listening right now, explain to Chris that you don't like to muddle. My sister was a bartender. Teddy should she... be able to tell you. He's hired a lot of bartenders. I bet you. I bet you. I bet he I bet expects. He, I bet he expects room. him to muddle. Of course he expects him to, because he's fucking owning the place. But I guarantee his bartenders bitch about it all the time. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Tell him thanks for making me muddle. <laughs> See, <laughs> she's laughing. See, she knew exactly what I was talking about. She turned around and laughed. As soon as I said the word muddle, she started laughing. Because she knows you're a dick. <laughs> Huge dick. <laughs> <laughs> I might, be. I might be. Oh my gosh! You're, you probably, like, you might as well have just called her Flo. Yeah. You might as well have just, like, hey, hey Flo, can I get an old fashioned? Can you muddle up some cherries for me, Flo? <laughs> oh god! I'm gonna choke to death. Oh, thank you. There you go. So, okay. To me. The biggest, obviously, the biggest decision in the movie that she made as a result of anxiety is going in and, and looking at the coach's notebook. Um, yeah, probably that was probably because uh, it was completely against her character. Yes, and she was slowly losing her. So, and that you know that goes into something I had written down was how do we keep bad memories from forming bad beliefs? Yeah. Right. They did that thing like it was like the difference between a belief, you know, and that's why it goes back to the, your anxiety lies to you. Mm -hmm. Your anxiety makes this a belief when it shouldn't be. Yeah. You know, and that's what you're trying to avoid. Um, but yeah, I mean, did you have you had like a further point to that? I think. No, I just think that to me, that was the biggest. That was the that was because then that was the biggest indicator that it had taken over. Basically. Yeah, because then. When she saw the results, she went into even further panic. Right, right. And then she made another bad decision. And then she decided she was going to overtake the game. And then she started alienating her friends. And right. it just was a spiral. And then a back in a, and a back in a spiral of it. Yep. And she hurts one of her friends. Yes. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and I love that. I, I, if I were to have anything negative to say about the movie i kind of wish it didn't involve sports i kind of wish hockey wasn't part of it yeah i think the same thing could have been accomplished with just popularity changing school you know all that kind of stuff um i get i get it yeah but in a way i feel like in a way, I feel like it kind of sheds a negative light a little bit on sports. Yeah. And and instead <clears throat> of um, so, like for example, uh, <laughs> like it's basically saying like it's okay. Uh, uh, like okay, remember that commercial where it was like it was like a character counts commercial or something where the ball goes out of bounds. And the ref makes the wrong call and calls it out on the other team. And they get okay. in the huddle and the kid goes, Coach, it was out on me, coach. And then goes and tells the ref. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. Yep. The call. Mm -hmm. yep. I would kick the shit out of that kid if he was on my team. <laughs> he would, we would go in the locker room after the game 
and we would beat his ass. We would have. We would have Thanks very much, that guy. Tiny. Thank you, Tiny. Grind, yeah. our grinder sandwich. And our coach would have loved it. Yeah. Like. Yeah, we're good. We're thank, good. You. thank you. Yep. Good. Thank you. All right. All right Thanks, brother. Tiny. Uh, so it's just like, and to me, I felt like there was a little bit of that happening in the movie where, you know, it's your, your friends and, and yeah. You, well, but this is a competitive environment and we're not on the same team. So, you know what I mean? Right. Like, so in an early draft of the script, man, you got a bunch of, uh, reverb all of a sudden i think uh, you know what? yeah something. there we go how's that yeah it's better uh the script was to be about riley being in high school in a high school talent show but mm. it was changed later to riley going to hockey camp since she played the game quite often in the first one gotcha so so maybe they were you know kind of on the same page i i don't know uh i i think i i liked it a little bit because I think sports is the one place that still has a huge, I'm going to use the word stigma, even though Travis Justice told us not to use it. I never heard that. Yeah. He was like, I hate using the word stigma. Uh, I, he might have said it on the morning rush one morning. Yeah. I don't know. But I just remember thinking, yeah, God, I, I use that term all the time That's on funny. false yeah. starts. Um, but I think sports is one of the last bastions of place where you're not allowed to have mental health yeah and yeah things like, you know what i mean that's so that's a really good point so by them keeping that in there i think was really good that's a really you know what i mean really good point yeah i didn't think about that i guess um, yeah that's a great point actually uh i guess that for me um it it, it takes me back to how been out of shape i get yeah like about sports about my team you know or whatever i mean i was really the only team i get that way about my other teams i don't i'm not that emotionally attached to my other favorite teams for some reason but when it comes to the iowa hawkeyes i lose my mind and i i act sometimes i i i i i, I hate to say that i act out of character because I feel like I'm not necessarily off brand. <laughs> like, <laughs> but sometimes I lose my self awareness, I guess is a good way to put it. I think you're pretty, I mean, I think. I'm saying in the lean, moment. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. At and the then game, I regret the you're, shit out of it. Yeah. At the game, you'll. Yeah. yeah no, I, I'm with you. Like, yeah. or, I'll, you know, I might, like, I mean, I've told the stories on here a couple times about yeah. me cussing out the cops last year yep. and shit like that. I'm not proud of that. No. Like, they're kind of funny to talk about or whatever, but yeah, I don't want to do that again. Right. Like, I want to be that guy. Now that's who I am to those guys forever. Like, yeah, they're looking for you. I'm this fucking prick, but yeah, you know, I want to be that guy to people. That makes sense. You know, there's that part of you that, you know, you're not supposed to care what people think. Blah, 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 but I mean, in that situation, I was, I, mean, I was an asshole. Right. Like, nothing about any of that. It's the, the guy would have never came and talked to me if I wasn't acting like an idiot. Right. Right. Now, who gets to define what acting like an idiot is, I guess? That's another question. But yeah, because I don't think you were, I mean, I don't think you were out of line. No, you know, you know, not, you were not one hundred percent. Not one hundred percent. Once but. once there was a conversation, yeah. The doubling down maybe, not yeah, so much. Yeah, exactly. Was was the needed. doubling down is right. exactly oh well yeah. you're not gonna tell me what to do. Yeah, yeah, you know, like, right. well, yeah. yeah. Well Ross uh Ross chimes in and says we don't like to make old fashions or bloody Marys after ten AM. <laughs> okay, well thank you. But here's the thing, Ross. Buddy Marys are fine if the mix is already pre-made. Because then all you're doing is pouring vodka in there. And, you know, if throwing a beef stick in there and a stick of celery is too much, I mean, at least you don't got to muddle anything. 
fucking muddle. Uh, <laughs> it's good stuff, man. I'm trying to think of what else. How's the grinder? I haven't taken a bite of the grinder yet. Um, Dude, it's so, it's so good. I was, I put a tweet out today with the menu, uh-huh. and like three or four people did come back and say, definitely get the grinder. So it's. Uh, All right, I'm gonna, I'm taking a bite. You're gonna have to. It's talk. really good. Okay. Or not. So, one of the funny parts of the movie, obviously. Oh yeah, that's a good grinder. Oh, yeah. yeah, so good. Uh, I am a huge fan of the anger character in the movie. Well, especially when it's Lewis Black. That yeah, helps. I mean, how can you not like <laughs> Lewis Black? You know, um, my favorite part was when he was like, "Look at all these curse words on the board." <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I think I might have missed that actually when, they, when the new emotions came with the new yeah, board came. Yeah. Because they had gotten to be puberty and yeah, yeah. You know, I wonder are they gonna I wonder if they'll keep making these. I, I think it would be great if they just followed Riley all the way to the end. Just keep, yeah, keep absolutely. So did you I, I, like the nostalgia character, maybe that set in something yeah, else yeah. up, maybe? Yep. I think that would be brilliant because, I mean, I don't know. Just what a great, I mean, when it comes to mental health, I can't think of a better, a better movie. No, it explains it so well. I I think the second one's better. And I do too. And how they incorporated other people and then their inside outs. Whatever you know what I oh, mean? Oh yeah, the every, mom, like yeah. the mom and the dad. Yeah, and of course, you know the dad when he's like not paying attention and he's remembering yeah, yeah. the sports or whatever. It's like, yeah, that's me. That's I've done that before. Yeah, and some of that, I mean, you know, we some of that stuff annoys me. That cliche, yeah, dad's a dumbass. Shit. Yeah, but. You know, it's harmless, I guess, in that situation. Because I've always, I don't know, it's pretty. I, I can't stand that like sitcom thing where, yeah, we've had to, yeah, where it's all about dad's an idiot, yeah, like, mom, dad can't function, and yeah, he's yeah, just this emotionally dumb. I can't stand that. shit. Well, I mean, let's be honest, the last TV dad that had his shit together was Bill Cosby, so I don't know what that tells you. <laughs> Yeah, the most wholesome one ended up being Al Bundy. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, it, it was. Um, God, and it, it was so interesting because I go and I watch that movie, and then a few hours later, Trump gets shot at. Yeah. And now I'm like, well, what are we gonna do with this? And right. Yeah. It was great to watch. I did one of those things where I decided to just put some posts up and watch the world burn. Yeah. Because I saw. <laughs> yeah. Well, I love to do these little probes into human behavior. You know, I like to prove to them that they're no different than the other. Yeah. Because everybody's full of shit, if you ask me. I think top to bottom. Yeah. I think. The way people make excuses, the way things are okay and then not okay, as yep. long as their side, as long as it's your party, yeah. you know. I mean, yep. the amount of the amount of liberals that I knew that I was seeing on Facebook and stuff talking about how it was staged and like conspiracy, and I'm like, oh my god. Now you sound just like the January 6th yeah. idiots. You guys aren't, as long as it's the other team. Yes. Right. It drives me fucking crazy. Yeah. Full of shit. And so I'm pointing this out. And then my favorite thing, though, is to watch how emotion gets in the way of reading comprehension. Because the, the biggest, the one post that I put up that got the most traction comments whatever it is i said way to make a hero out of that fucking idiot you fucking idiot like how is that not condoning the shooter yeah people are reading that because i call trump an idiot Mm -hmm. as i wish he would have gotten killed right right yeah and i don't know maybe part of me does 
I don't know, maybe. And, you know, someone tells me what a piece of shit I am for even thinking that. Well, it's like, I don't know, did I just dehumanize him like he seems to do all the time to other people? Like, right. I'm just saying, like, you guys, just these two different ends. Like, you mean to tell me that you guys don't talk a bunch of shit about how you wish this guy would... How many times did you hang a, a, an Obama thing off of a back and you think it was funny and yeah. shit like that? Don't act like... Yeah, it's, you know. it's the full extremes. I had kind of a conversation with... Like, I, that was one of the... I, I'm pretty deep into historical things and, and politics. I, you know, I put a tweet out today that said, I am so... I, I One of the things that I loved the most was was watching conventions and watching speeches and and watching the political process and the debates and whatever. And I'm so exhausted. Yeah. I don't even want to watch it. And it's taken the joy away from me. And I know that sounds weird, but the actual physical process of that is enjoyable to me. Like I grew up with my dad. We would watch presidential yes. elections together. We, so well, a guy made a great point. Um, buddy of mine, who's a big conservative and he said, because I put in there, I, I said at one point, I was like, what? Explain to me how I'm not condoning the shooter by saying this. I'm saying he's an idiot. And I'm like, he would have been an idiot if he killed him or if he did either by 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 even shooting at him. He's he's martyring him. Right. Like he's, he's accomplishing the exact opposite. Yes, great, great, fantastic, awesome. Tiny, thanks so much, man. Appreciate it. It's been great. Yep. Um, and so, you know, and I go, you guys are are losing your minds over someone that'll you'll never meet. Yes. That doesn't give two shits about you. Like it's just bizarre to me. Yeah. And this guy goes, you have you have sports. Some people have politics, and then he put he quoted me underneath that. It's bizarre to just care about these people, and blah blah blah. And I I had to tell him that that's a great point. Yeah, that is a great comparison. Yeah, I would say the only difference is what I'm talking about is harmless, as far as and I don't think friendships and and, and families are breaking up over, over sports. Exactly what I said. I go. I am not gonna insult you as a human being question your yep. character call you a bunch of names because you like iowa state i i sent saturday the night. stakes aren't that high that, no you know that's the thing with politics right yes it's, that's why i get annoyed yeah i have some of us have politics so what you're, you're essentially what you're saying is that's your fox nfl sunday right well it's not supposed to be fox nfl right. sunday this is life yeah. This isn't a this isn't a game. Right. You guys treat it like it's a game. That's my problem. And the difference is is after they're done, they go over and shake each other's hands and move on. Mm-hmm. We don't do that anymore. Right. They don't they don't do that anymore. And I after Saturday night, I made a conscious decision I was not going to react to anything online. Yeah. Um I generally was upset that somebody took a shot at him. Yeah. Because that's just not that's not who we should that's not who we are and also, i did not and i also didn't want to put a, yeah i didn't want to put a tweet out i didn't want to put a statement out i didn't want to do anything out and it come off as misconstrued and i literally i texted three or four friends of mine that are on, that are on the opposite side and said listen i'm just going to tell you right now i'm not going to say anything i don't want to take a chance of, of ruining a friendship right. over whatever you know have i seen things like you know, the, the rhetoric is so that, that he was attacked because of, of this rhetoric or whatever. Yeah. Probably, yes. Did he at one point say that, that journalists were the enemy of the state? I mean, and I remember when he was president, and I'm defending him in this point. Everybody said, well, when you're a president, your, your word carries a lot more weight. Okay, well, then that applies to Biden as well. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. you know. So if he's saying that you know we need to put a bullseye on him or whatever, you're the president. Yeah, those words should not come out of your mouth. Right. Um, we for and it's the same thing. We forget that when it's our side. It, it's well, just you, like you, the they, vaccine is a perfect example. Well, some, I can remember at the very early when when Trump was pushing for the vaccine and was working on the vaccine. I remember prominent Democrats going, "I'm not taking it." 
Right. I'm not going to take it because it was his idea. It was his idea. And who's to say it's, it's not being pushed through. And then the minute that it flipped a switch, they were going to take it. Yeah. Me, I was taking it either way because I wanted to be in Jack Trice in the fall and I didn't give a flying fuck. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Yeah, I agree. You mean I can take a vaccine and not get as sick and I'm getting out of here? I don't give a shit who creates it. And, yeah, and that, that's not an indictment on anybody that didn't take it. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. Well, it turns I didn't out. Have, I didn't have a, I didn't, as yeah. Ross Peterson likes to say, I didn't care whose laundry, whose colored jersey was on. It didn't uh-huh. make, didn't make fucking difference to me. And that, and, and now you got people fighting with people they love. Over yeah. These people. And that's what I said. Everybody's full of shit. Yep. Biden's full of shit. Trump's full of shit. CNN's full of shit. Fox is full of shit. There's two things that should never, ever, 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 ever have party affiliation. Ever. The media. Yep. And judges. Yes. Those two things should never, ever be affiliated with any side of anything. Yep. And, you know, a lot of what people will say, and it makes it's true, vote policy over person. Yep. I've heard Killer Mike say that. I've heard, you know, that's one of the things, like, who should you vote for? And he goes, vote policy over person. Just educate yourself. Yeah. You know, I agree to that to a certain extent, but then why we put the person up? Right. Why don't we just vote between parties? Yeah. And it doesn't matter who it is. Right. Yep. You just have blue and red. Everybody votes, votes blue or red, then they get to decide who they put up there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so you can't do that. You can't just vote policy. Nope. Nope. Well, I think we're gonna we're gonna wrap this one up. Uh, I want to personally thank Teddy for uh, inviting us out to Polk City Pub. Uh, I encourage everybody to listen to this. It's like a it was like a twenty five minute drive from me from work downtown. Like it's yeah. super easy to get here. The oh, neighborhood yeah. is really cool. It's nice and, and chill. If you're out at the Sailorville and you're you're boating or you're at the beach or whatever, you're looking for for dinner. Come out to Polk City Pub. Uh, hit hit these guys up. Tiny was awesome. The food was great. Uh, the old fashioned was good. Muddled perfectly. Thank you very much. Did they do a good job? They of did. Muddling? They muddled it perfectly. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, the rest of our podcast. Uh, I know Hawks Eye View is starting um, next month. Uh, Iowa State, uh, the side of the storm. They've got Brent Bloom coming on. Uh, old man strength just had an episode. The, the the climbing Mount Rushmore with me and Teddy is is hopping on. So we are we're getting ready for uh, another season to start up, gearing up in August. Um, I know I'm forgetting something. Uh, check out also. I want to give a shout out to to your Mo bloody Mary, yeah. to, to Mo. It's gonna be Mo goodness soon. Mo goodness. Right now we're still just Mo rub, but we've got all our products. And just don't forget about the Bloody Mary mix. I've got, I got the pretzels. I can't reach them right now, but I was. Oh, oh yeah, there we go. Right here. Yes, lovely. Get Look at her. Pack out. See, this is the rub right here. This is what Mo Rub looks like in the package. Nine spice blend. You rub it. One of the best things to do, honestly, is just mix it with sour cream. Yeah. Really good dip. Then we got the Mo, the Mo Crack pretzels. It's one of my favorite things to hand samples out of because I tell everybody that uh, first hit's free. <laughs> and uh, that's how you get hooked. And then you got uh, Mo Nuts because everybody wants Mo Nuts. <laughs> but uh, definitely uh, keep this in mind. We are gonna, we're going to get some graphics. We're going to, you know. We'll, yep, we'll, we're going to get it hooked up. And, and all that stuff. Um, and uh, be looking for uh me in a in a bar and restaurant near you because i'm gonna get these snacks out there i'm gonna get the bloody mary mix out there start looking in the grocery stores we're gonna work with that too caitlin's all um, about bloody mary's yeah so i'm getting ready to uh make a big push here and uh 
we're actually probably at some point, I think, uh, we're going to start doing, we're going to do like a full on like Mo, Mo Rub comedy tour. Sweet. So that we can get to the smaller town bars around yeah. and get our, get our products in there. Awesome. That sounds awesome. Also do a show at the same time. So that'll be fun. Um, yeah. Should be a good time. But uh, love everybody. Thank you for listening, watching. Uh, make sure you go see Inside Out too if you haven't. That's right. Honestly, it's. Uh, it, it, it's just amazing. It's brilliant. It's heavy. It's emotional. Pretty sure I made the lady next to me cry in the theater. <laughs> like I said, I was up in that corner. And this lady's like four seats over with like her daughter or something. And during that moment, I'm starting to get really emotional. Like, and I was barely, you know, just. Yeah. And then it got to, it, it graduated to the point where you have to sniffle. Yep. Because like all you got to, not, I mean, I didn't right. bring Kleenex with me. I wasn't right. prepared. So, like, you got the little napkin sitting there, and that's toast, like, within two seconds. <laughs> so, like, I start sniffling, and then, like, there was a pause in my sniffling. And then all of a sudden, I hear her, like, <laughs> I hear her, I'm like, all right. Like, I got her. I can go now. Yeah, yeah. Go. She was like, oh, this poor man. She was probably thinking there was something wrong with me. Awesome. I'm figuring right. that out, by the way. Hold on. I'm sorry. We got to yep, go. But right. Something is wrong with me. I'm getting really emotional. I used to never get emotional during movies and stuff. I mean, like somewhat, like Rudy. Like yeah. When I saw Rudy, that was like, yeah. I cried you know, a little I mean, bit of Rudy. Just a little, yeah. right? Yeah. Dude, it's happening. Just fucking to be seen too. Like I nothing. Like so, I watched this movie called uh, uh, Long Shot or The Long Shot or something. It's on Netflix. Okay. And it's about this golf team a high school golf team yeah in texas in like the 50s or 60s right <laughs> and it's, it's these poor mexican kids they they caddy at the country club yep. right but they obviously can't play there right um well then this superintendent comes and takes over their school district and he's trying to be a member of this club and they won't let him in because he's mexican right yeah well He's driving along one day and somebody hits a golf ball through his window, looks up, it's these Mexican kids up on the hill hitting golf balls. Yeah. And uh, so he ends up, Dennis Quaid is going to help him coach him. Like he's bringing Dennis Quaid up there and he's, rah, rah, I don't know. You know, that whole thing. White guy just after World War II or Nam yeah. or something. I don't know what war. Anyway, he's, rah, I they better respect the game, you know, all that shit. <laughs> So he goes walking up to the top of the hill to meet them, and he's not he's not on board to coach yet. He was just right. convinced him to come talk to him for a minute. Goes up the hill, and then the music starts. You know, he gets to the top of the hill, and he looks down, and these kids are hand making. Like so, after the window broke, and he went and chased him down. He noticed a, a stick with a with a rag on it. Yeah. And, so, and he saw the golf club, so he saw what they were doing. So this time, Dennis Quay goes up, and he, they're all down there by hand, digging a sand trap and, like, stomping the grass down on the green. They're inventing a hole because they're too sure. poor. Yeah. And I just <laughs> – like, the moment, where, the moment where Dennis Quaid saw them digging a hole, it's like – 15 minutes in <laughs> like no one's accomplished anything yet it's like i'm already crying because they're gonna win the state they're gonna of course now it was crazy and i was just like i almost slapped the shit out of my what did your kids say the other day when you had that photo you're like when did you become a basic yeah, white when bitch? did you become a basic white bitch? yeah that's my kid <laughs> Chip off the old block there. Uh, speaking of which, we're gonna sponsor. Oh, we do have the wrestling coming. We, 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 up. we got the wrestling meet coming. The the wrestling, wrestling match. Meet, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> the, we're gonna we're, we're yeah we're sponsoring a live wrestling we match, are. pro wrestling. September fourteenth at the Recflex, uh September fourteenth. Yep. So we're gonna yep. uh, we're gonna start making some graphics and some advertising for that. Anybody so, that we've got some tickets. So like, yes. Anybody we have like twenty five tickets. Go, yeah, we've yeah. got a, we've got some. I mean, obviously a lot are spoken for, but. Uh, we do have some, if any listeners, fans, whatever. Can I hit you with like a chair? Well, is that okay? Oh, you can hit my son with one. Oh, fuck probably. yeah. I'll hit Jackson with a chair. I don't uh, give a shit. But anyway, yeah. A little so, wuss. You know, message Jackson's us ass. if you're interested. I'd love to get, <laughs> I would love to get some more people out there. And, Absolutely. Uh, you know. Hopefully, so, he's, hopefully he's not. So look out for that. And uh, man, we got all kinds of stuff. We might got some T-shirts that are teasing, and nice. We got uh, a little bit of an alcoholic beverage that might be launching. Uh, 
Oh, yeah, I feel like so. we should, like, I don't know, maybe team up with Revolts and Vodka. Yeah, we could do that. Some Bloody Marys. I mean, they're we probably can... just using fucking Zing Zang. They're, <laughs> I'm sure they're, they're a local company. Sure they They'd probably like to use another one. They, they're all about here. local. They're all yeah. about local. Hell yeah. All right, guys, we're going to get out of here. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We appreciate it. Everybody have a great night. Love. And we are out of here.